This video is about how I have a ball drilled and what I do with the grips to make it as easy as possible for me to hold with just with two fingers, no thumb inside the ball. Um, but further getting into this, I want to say that there is no correct way to have the ball drilled if you're bowling with the style. Everyone has a different hand. Everyone bowls a little bit differently. So if someone has you know, a drilling that works well for them, that it works well for them. But I think it just in general, there's not a lot of information known about this. And if you're bowling this way and you go into a pro shop and you're just like, here, give me something, you're probably just going to get standard pitches that are going to work, you know, as a starting point for someone who bowls with their thumb. It's not going to be optimized for your game. So if you're having trouble holding onto the ball, if you're looking for a better way to drill that might help you a little bit that I think um, there might be some things I mentioned in this video that might work for you. Uh, this is all, again, all based on my experimentation and again, if I mention something here it's because I have tried it myself. Some of this might be a little basic to start but I'm going to go over forward and reverse pitch and I'm going to go over the lateral pitches and some more advanced things. But forward pitch for anyone who doesn't know means that the fingers are drilled with the angle towards you. Like, so it means it's easier to grip. Reverse pitch means that the fingers are pointed away. And zero pitch would mean that it's going straight down. Now, I think that if someone maybe is just bowling straight on fingertip, you know, this way, if they're only, and they're just putting this much of their fingers into it, it may not really matter that much. Uh, I don't bowl that way, so I'm not sure. But I, I put my fingers in pretty deep. And, you know, I have tried reverse pitch, and, and there, I think there's a theory out there that reverse pitch helps people lay the ball down more gently, which maybe it does for um, some people. Um, I, I'm not concerned about that, but I'll just say, um, when you're bowling with this way, you, you want to be able to grab the ball firmly. And if you open up your fingers, th then your, your muscles are aren't in their, their strongest position. So when you start adding reverse pitch, your muscles are in a weaker position and you're gonna to have to use a lot more force to grab onto it. And that makes it much harder. So for me, reverse pitch was a total disaster. So it's much easier to grab on and secure the ball with either a zero or forward pitch. And when you're bowling this way, you know, you don't have your thumb, you're not holding onto it with your other hand. The most important thing is to maintain security of the ball. If you have too much forward pitch, if it's pointed too much towards you, then your hand can kind of be, be scrunched up. So that can make it hard to hold as well. What I have found for myself is that the most ideal pitches are, is, is either somewhere between zero and one eighth forward. Lateral finger pitches is basically the angle of these fingers from left to right. Now, you want to hear people say that the reason why these holes can't be drilled straight down and this the left one has to be drilled towards the left and the right one has to be drilled towards the right is so that the fingers don't you know hit each other into the ball which is true if you have drilled both of these with zero pitch then the holes will hit each other inside the ball and that would be bad but even if that wasn't the problem if you had two holes at zero pitch like your fingers wouldn't be able to get into it like, like you know so you need the pitches to put your fingers in, in the best way uh, now, if you just go into a pro shop and you're just like, oh, well, I don't know anything, just drill two holes, you're probably going to get three-eighths left on the left finger and three-eighths right on the right finger. And that's because those are like standard starting pitches if you're bowling with your thumb. Uh, and that might work for some people, and if it works that way for you, then great, but that doesn't work for me at all. On these images, the middle one is someone off of YouTube who seems to be a good, like, no thumb bowler, and the one on the right is me. I put a circle between his index finger and thumb because what you're going to see in people who bowl this way is usually the th those fingers are spread apart to create a kind of webbing to catch and control the ball. So the more secure the ball can be in that webbing, the more secure you're going to be holding and the better bowler you're going to be. Now, if someone has large hands, uh, very flexible hands, if they have a thumb that can just wrap around, then maybe the pitches don't matter so much. However, in my case, I have a, a I don't want to say very small hand, but I don't have a large hand at all, and my thumb is pretty short. 
So what I do with the lateral finger pitches is I change it from the standard three eighths to make it easier for me to hold the ball with my thumb on the side. So when I'm holding this, I'm basically squeezing between these two fingers, between the middle finger and the thumb when I hold it. And then I'm supporting the ball with the index finger. So the, if the thumb and the middle finger are farther apart, it's going to put the muscles in a weaker position. It's going to make it harder to hold. If the thumb and the middle finger are closer together, then the muscles are in a more dominant um, position and it's going to be easier to squeeze and hold. So that's why my middle finger is pitched one half inch towards the left and my ring finger is pitched one, one eighth inch towards the right. So overall my pitches again are one half left, one eighth forward and the, the ring one is one eighth forward and one eighth right and that just makes it easier for me to just squeeze the ball. This one might be a little harder to explain, um, so I hope the diagrams and the props help. But if we could imagine that there was a thumb hole here, then you know, there's a span between the thumb hole and each of these fingers, and typically um, if there is a thumb hole, then the ring finger would be a little bit further away. Um, so we could think about the same thing even if there is no thumb there. If we had an imaginary point, these fingers don't need to be exactly the same distance away from each other. And what I have found is if the middle, sorry, if the ring finger is farther away, so I'm holding this and the ring finger is farther away, it turns the ball this way and then it kind of makes the ball want to fall more that way into my arm when I'm holding it in my forearm. And I think that, that's how I hold it, and I think a lot of other people ball this way hold it, is that they want the ball sitting on this side of the forearm. So I find again, push, putting this ring finger backwards turns the ball that way. I've also tried it the other way where the middle finger is closer, and that's going, when the middle finger is closer, that's going to turn the ball this way, and then the ball just wants to fall off my hand. So I, I say at the least, I like, from my opinion is if the fingers are even I can do that but I prefer if this finger is a little bit further away the other way and I really cannot stand that. Uh, one of the nice things about this is you don't have to have a ball re-drilled um, in order to experiment with, um, with it. Um, one way is you can just take the grips out like this doesn't have grips in now and you can just hold the ball like with the fingers this way that way that way see what feels best or if you just take um, pitched grips and put them in, you can kind of simulate this. You know, if you turn the grips this way, then you get a little bit of the feeling of what it's like if the ring finger's further away. If you turn the grips that way, and of course then glue them in and bowl this way, then you would get a bit of a feeling of what it's like if the ring finger's closer. Of course, I'm just using these pitch grips so you can see what I'm talking about. I think um, most people um, would not use those pitch grips if they're blowing without the thumb, although some do. Now we're going to get into what I think is probably the most important part of any of this, what I spent the most time working on, and that's um, the finger depth and gripping the ball. I mean, the simplest thing someone could do is just go into a pro shop and get a ball and maybe the guy will just put in two pitch strips like this. And, you know, maybe if your hands are large enough, you can just put in like a fingertip and hold the ball and, and you're fine. And I know there are people doing it that way. And if that works for you, then, then that's great. I can't bowl this way. My hands are too small. I just can't hold the ball that way. So then there are many options. You could go other than fingertip. You can get grips where your fingers go in, you know, a little bit more like a semi fingertip. You can go in all the way and you can try different, obviously different size grips. Um, some have the different pitches, some are oval, but, but I'm going to do something a little bit more complicated. I, I'm going to put grips in this ball so you see what, what I think is the best, most comfortable way of doing this. Um, something else besides just what type of grip you're, do, you're using is how far do you push the grip into the ball because I like to really dig in so uh, I used to just put it even up to, to the side but then over time I just realized if I shove it in deeper then that feels better. Now ironically the, um, the really difficult part with this is if you're going like conventional depth like I do because you get my hands aren't big enough to do otherwise actually the middle finger is easier. Um, 
but what ha but the ring finger is harder because when I hold the ball, what really happens is the middle finger ends up wrapping around forward. So I have to you know, bevel out the front here. And, and by the way, oh, you can see here, um, the, at this point, these are things you're going to want to learn how to do yourself. Um, when it comes to really customizing it at this level, I, I, I wouldn't bother with the Got the Pro Shop because, again, they're not going to know, know all this about your game. The best person to do this is you. And if you, bevel knife is essential for getting your fingers to feel right. And also, if you're experimenting and changing grips often, then you know you you have to remove the excess glue because if you just try this grip and that grip you know each time you're leaving some glue residue so you need a bevel knife to to get that out okay but anyway when, when i hold the ball the middle finger wraps forward around so all i have to do is bevel this out enough however what happens is it's kind of like i hold it this way so the middle finger is okay and then the ring finger gets pushed backwards so if there's one part here that i would bevel what's more important isn't really the front it would actually be the back of the hole uh but even when it's my fingers in a grip like if i were to use an oval grip like this what i would find is then my finger would get pushed backwards and even this would create an uncomfortable edge in the back of the ball and I can never well I eventually found a way to do it and I'm going to show you how that is but it was always that the finger would go backwards and, and it would just be uncomfortable that it's very important that it's comfortable and you need okay the fingers have to be firm because you don't want them wobbling around but you don't want them stiff either because if the fingers are stiff not only is it going to hurt but just while you're in the middle of the swing there might be little points where your fingers are pushing this way or that way there needs to be a tiny bit of, of give okay the first video i made of this disappeared so i'm redoing it for grips there are several different options obviously if you're just going fingertip you could probably just put whatever in and that's really simple you don't have to worry so much about the pitches and exactly what grips you're doing you probably just do this and you're good to go if you're going deeper down like I do then there's a lot more complexity to figure out exactly what's going to work for you uh, first of all using anything that's pitched probably is not going to work you probably don't want something pitched like this and sticking your finger in that way there are uh, besides the quarter inch forwards they do make like an eighth inch forward uh, I see that this could work. I was trying it this way for my middle finger for a while because I just put this in and set my finger that way. But even still, this bit of a groove there was causing um, my, my finger to cut. So this, this is not ideal. The ovals, I, I think that's the way most people would do it. Uh, what I didn't like about the ovals was two things. First of all, like you had to get them perfectly parallel to each other. And then I felt like I'm always going up on the approach wiggling around my fingers trying to make sure they're in exactly the right spot that's what i don't want that i just want something where i put in my fingers and, and i'm good 100 percent of the time i'm not wiggling it around that thing with the with the um ovals is i felt it was hard to get it um the tightness down right if it's too tight then your fingers are going to be stiff and you don't want stiff fingers because in the middle of your swing maybe you know your fingers have to have a little bit of give it can't be loose you, you don't want it to be falling out you don't want to have to grab excessively because it's loose you want a firm feel with the fingers but you don't want to really stiff and tight either so with the um, ovals I always felt like i was between it being too t stiff or being too loose trying to get it down exactly perfect one thing that i was doing because like one size was too big another size was too small and someone could do this where if you feel like you're in between sizes you could always uh, take some sandpaper and just open up the hole a little bit and then the grips are going to feel a little bit larger the most difficult part that i really had with um the grips and figuring out a solution is on the ring finger because the the middle finger would wrap around forward when I hold this, but the ring finger goes backwards. So it's like the ring finger is always bashing against the back of the hole. And if there's a rough, if there's an edge, even the edge on the top of the grips, that, that was bothering me. A, something circular definitely felt better. So even if I like the oval on the front of the grip, having that 
edge on the top the back that that didn't feel good at all there are two ways to get a round grip and i think having round grips are the best because uh you don't have to worry about is it lined up perfectly i feel like i'm not going in there and wiggling around each time and also it really solves the problem of the ring finger going into the back of the hole so one option and then i'm going to go over the way that I'm doing it, but I'm probably going to experiment with doing this again, is they do make grips where, you know, like on one side is just regular pitch, but on the other side, these are like semi-fingertip. So basically, if you're already sticking your fingers in deeper, if you're already going semi-fingertip, you can just try the grips made for semi-fingertip and stick them right in. These are super comfortable. The one problem that I had when I tried this, I only tried this when I just started, I am going to experiment with it again, is it felt like because there's a little bit of a bump there and this was super comfortable but on the release it felt like my finger was getting stuck on it and then it was causing me to jerk my arm a little and throw the ball right maybe things are different now because i'm a very different bowler than like two years ago when i tried this but using these semi fingertip grips were very 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 comfortable and uh, but I'm going to try that again. I, you know, I'd like to stick it in deeper in and just go that way. But how do you just get round grips? Because if you look for them, they don't make round grips. So what I figured out is I can make my own round grips out of these. And it's pretty simple. You just take regular grips at a pitch and I'm just going to cut out. So now we kind of have two round grips. Now we're not done yet because because at this point this would just be horrible because if you put it in, then you're gonna have this whole back crazy edge pushing against the finger. So what do we do about that now? Well, pretty simple. Take double-sided tape, take this little piece that was cut out and I'm actually gonna you don't have to do it exactly this way, but I'm just going to use this to measure out a piece of double-sided tape. Obviously, these are things that you, to agree, you just have to experiment with and play around on your own to figure out what's going to work. Uh, you, you know, this is not something that I would bother a pro shop person with. Uh, even it, it doesn't matter how good that person the pro shop is; they're they're not going to understand pl trying different things to. Um, get like a perfect grip if you're not using your thumb uh you know personally i, I just i'm not interested in bothering going to someone and trying to get them to do strange things that and then listening to them tell me that i don't know what i'm talking about or something so there's some double-sided tape right there in the back then because 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 this is a little bit further deeper into the hole it's kind of like Cut out another piece of tape and just get this thing off. And I'm going to cut, slim this down a little bit. I'm kind of going a little faster than I usually do just because I'm in front of a camera and to go tediously slow would be incredibly boring. And then I put this on the very top. That's because there, there is that back edge there and I don't want my finger bashing against that edge. So then what we end up with is a round grip. Now this back is round. There's no sharp edges there for the finger to jab against. Depending upon the size of the grip, one piece of double um, sided tape maybe two pieces is fine and you do that for both sides and what you end up with is basically um ball like this with two perfectly round grips uh you know you have to be like your own pro shop it's so easy to buy a bevel knife to get some glue get a screwdriver to take out grips um, so the advantages to this is I'm not wiggling around trying to get my fingers in perfectly. No, it's just round, so I don't have to put it in in a way that's shaping to one oval hole. Again, the, the 
big advantage is this ring finger. And so now this is super, super comfortable. This pushes against the back. And But what is it pushing against? It's not pushing against some some the top of a grip, like an edge that's hurting it. It's, it's pushing against a bunch of double-sided tape. So this is super comfortable. In terms of beveling, like you need a bevel knife, bevel out the front of the holes as needed. I have to bevel my middle finger front out a lot because I dig my middle finger in all the way. And yeah, I hope this might help someone. The, I, I'm not saying this is the way to do it. There is no way to do it. But if you're struggling with figuring out what the perfect feel is, what exactly to do with the grips, you just, you know, you, you kind of feel like you, you're on the right track, but you but there's no grips that are really comfortable. I think this it, it makes for a super comfortable feel. Again, the, the closest thing to this is actually using the, the semi-fingertip grips. Uh, but again, they have that bump in there, which while it makes it very comfortable when your fingers are in this way, I, f I feel that it can mess up the release a little bit. So um, that's it for that. Um, okay, that's it. Bye.